And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering, and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on! us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. 
And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So what do you mean, like, this is long-term? Like, we're not supposed to be focused on the here Revelation and now? Revelation 21. We're supposed to be spiritually minded of things that are the fulfillment of typology, that are rock solid, that are eternal, things that cannot yet be seen, but the Bible tells us are eternal and solid and coming, a hope that we're waiting for, not the wishy-washy kind of hope, like, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. But something that is coming, it's for certain. You just got to be patient. The disturbing findings from the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board. Well, they've been cooking things up for a while now. And they are preparing for what will ultimately be what the Bible warned you about. They're going to set off global contagion of disease. And so one of the reasons why you want to get into the ark now through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the cutoff branch, the ark of the second or renewed covenant, the one who kept the law for you perfectly, you get credit for that. He also takes away and pays for all your sins, all for free, not a penny. The only currency he accepts is faith, and he extends you grace to an evil population and a rare few come forward and say, I will take that. Yes, I do not like my sinful nature. I want to be with you, Christ. Well, you definitely want to get on board because if you don't like being sick and all the other things that are coming, you are not going to want to be a part of this new world order, this new world system, this new humanity that's being birthed. Because in order to get to it, they're going to bring what they call the birthing pains. Not exactly in the same manner and regard that Jesus calls the birthing pains, which are actually the seven years. Same seven years, but Jesus has a good intent for people to be motivated by the correction of the rod Isaiah talks about. And to repent, to come to him because he's not willing to any perish and go to hell. But you see, the people of the world, the rainbow mafia, the trans community, the uh, people who are legislating bills against any type of free thought, free speech, free anything, that's gone. Full bore communism, the Pope of, of Rome, Babylon, Islam, and all the other religions wrapped up within coexist, the weakling Christians that are fake, fakey, fakingtons, and Israel, Babylon, oh, they are all converging together into one giant Babylonian horror. And she is selfish. She is evil. And her makeup and attitude, the globe over, the world over, all the people who want to become gods, they're going to have to sacrifice a big, giant number of people because they want to get that number pared down to a nice, manageable number. So, before you even go anywhere near the mark of the beast, which is three and a half years after the inception on the on Yom Hadin, the Feast of Trumpets, many other names, when it commences, the time of Jacob's trouble, the birthing pains, oh my goodness, they have got plans for you. They are going to, for one thing, they are going to cause global contagion. And basically when you have a scenario where you have widespread death, Disease is just kind of part and parcel of it. If you know your history and you know what happened in, in various wars, you know that when there's death and bodies and decay, the Lord of the Flies, Beelzebub, Satan, Lucifer, the light that is not the light, that is the darkness, that is confusing people that think he's the light, but he isn't the light. He can't be of light. He's a darkness. He's a deceiver. He's evil. And he's tricking the whole world into going straight to the pit of hell through deceiving them 
and he'll use the popular and the pretty and the important. Watch out. They have got plans for you. They're going to sacrifice a whole bunch of people, and they are going to use that fourth horse, that pestilence, that death that, that results from pestilence. But you remember, they've got freezers full of smallpox and Ebola, and they've got live cases of Ebola, and they are going to use that baby to their best advantage. Remember that horrible movie that had Gwyneth Paltrow in it, and she died, and you used well, I don't want to talk about that. But anyhow, I can't remember what it's called. It might even be called Contagion or Contagion. And it had Matt Damon. I don't remember the name of the movie. It was the most depressing, bang your head into the wall movie ever. And uh, anyhow, you just imagine that movie, if you know what I'm talking about, times a bajillion. And that's what they have planned for you. And when they talk about it, like, we're not prepared. Oh, no. It's because they're starting something. When... Christ comes and removes Philadelphia and the dead in Yahweh, Smyrna, and cuts off the unbeliever. They are going to launch that Antichrist, one of these Rosh Hashanah, anoint him, give him a crown, give him that bow. They're going to hand the power over to him so that he can make every single one of you left behind sign on to the oath covenant of Noahide and all these laws. So you can't say anything. You can't do anything. Everything's listening to you. Surveillance everywhere. Boy, they got plans for you. They are going to murder you off in the most disgusting of manners. And they're going to starve you out. You do not want to be part of that. Let's listen. There are some very disturbing findings coming out of a think tank group. And I'm not sure if this group is private, public. You try to research it and it's nebulous. But nonetheless, they put out a report that I think every person should hear about. I think every person would say, hey, this is really concerning. And we're going to talk about this report from the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board here on The Common Sense Show. My name is Dave Hodges. I'm the host of The Common Sense Show, and we are the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. We're brought to you by RefundSecret.com. What is that? Well, you might remember back in 2008 during the bailout, there were so many loopholes discovered by this research firm that the government eventually had to move in and shut it down because people were making so much money on these loopholes. Well, they have found more loopholes, and they got a video to tell you all about it. Go to the description box following this broadcast and click on... So you're saying the Global Preparedness... Monetary Board is saying, watch out, America. Now, we do know that this board is connected to Northeastern University in liberal Boston and Imperial College in London, all both very liberal universities. And that's why I'm surprised that they're bringing this to you. What they have said are groups like Netflix and Roku and all these other media sites are now compiling data on you. See, we were outraged when we found out that... Wait a minute. Back that up. What did he just say? Did he just say that Netflix and Roku are data collecting your information? Is that what I just heard with my ears? On you. See, we were outraged when sites are now... What they have said are groups like Netflix and Roku and all these other media sites are now compiling data on you. See, we were outraged when we found out that certain TVs were spying on you in the bedroom. Well, now we find out that virtually every time you have on a service like Netflix and Roku, they're spying on you too, and they're sending out the data to your competitors. Now, who are your competitors? Oh, I'm sorry. Those that would rob you of your freedom. Those would rob you of your privacy. And do you know who's involved in this too? Oh, come on. You're not going to believe it. As Steve Quayle calls them, faces of death book. That's right. They're involved in this. Now you have to ask yourself, why is there the fascination and obsession with collecting data on you? Because when you're going to reduce the population by a significant amount, you need lots of data to determine who should be on the nice list and who should be on the naughty list. 
It doesn't get any more simple than that. Well, that's it for the com Oh, okay. So when the Masons and Kabbalists, Pope and the Communists, everybody else we've talked about, are planning your deaths out, they're data collecting to find out which one are Christians, getting into your email and everything else.